John Tory will stay on as mayor at least for tomorrow's city council meeting on the city's budget, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions about the scandal that is seemingly ending his political career. And joining us live now to discuss this is David Ryder, Toronto Star City Hall bureau chief, who was part of the team that had this exclusive story on Mayor Tory's affair. David, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Uh, I'll start off with how this all unfolded. Um, I mean, it's not something that just came to light on Friday night when this story was published. Uh, you, you actually published an article last week calling this a, an agonizing week, at least at City Hall, as uh, this story and uh, just rumors of this going through uh, were churning at City Hall. Yeah, I know for a lot of people, it just seemed like kind of a bolt out of nowhere, but I've actually been living with this for a while. We worked really hard. I actually got the original tip, which was that the mayor's marriage was kind of ending or, or on the route to ending back in December. I made sort of a sensitive, cautious outreach to the mayor's office and was told he's not ready to talk about whatever's going on. And I said, fine. Since then, I started to hear that it was kind of an open secret in political circles that uh, he and his wife, uh, Barbara, were estranged. And then about two weeks ago, I got you know, a pretty credible tip that, in fact, it wasn't just drifting apart, that there was another person involved. And I guess more importantly, as far as the news judgment goes, was that it was a woman who had worked in his office and he was essentially her boss, that it was a junior staffer. Um, so we started to investigate and we put detailed questions to the mayor's office first on February 2nd and then about a week later with more. Uh, then we got a response from the uh, mayor's lawyer that confirmed what we were hearing. Uh, we published a story at 7.30 on Friday night, and he held the news conference at 8.30 and announced that he was resigning. Now, uh, also in the article that you published yesterday, kind of going through the process of uh, putting this story to press, you mentioned that the mayor uh, was looking at potentially putting out a statement as early as last Sunday, February 5th. Yeah, he had a big, I mean, because we gave him lots of notice that we were looking at this issue, he had a big circle of advisors around him, including basically a crisis communications team that he created in his office with a war room. And they, uh, my information from them was that they gamed out every possible situation, including preemptively releasing it early last week, a Sunday or Monday, when you're good, it's going to be less of a news value as opposed to leading up to the week when people are going to be off on the weekend and able to kind of read and absorb. Uh, but then they decided to hold tight. And then I think think there was maybe some thought that they could, you know, talk us out of doing the story or there would be something that would come along that would make it not a story. Um, but things kept proceeding. And then we did get the full statement from them last Friday. Now, there have been critics, including some uh, who are published in the Toronto Star, saying that this story is a personal matter that shouldn't have been published. What do you say to that? I say we we spent a lot of debate, a lot of time thinking about this. If honestly, if we'd spent two or three weeks investigating and at the end of the day, the relationship had nothing to do with City Hall, that she didn't work at City Hall, that nothing happened until after she left because she moved into another job, we, I don't think we would have published the story. But I think in the post Me Too era, um, people, it, it is considered um, an issue. If, if this was a CEO on Bay Street and they were found to have had a, an affair with a junior staffer, um, I think the chances are they would have been in trouble and maybe fired. I don't think people would have questioned that. Um, and you know what? The mayor could have come back to us and said, this is what happened and it's not an issue. Um, we certainly didn't call him to resign. That was, you know, a surprise. We heard that a day before that he was probably going to do that. That was a surprise to us. So I, I have no problem defending the, the, the decision to publish. All the other things that have happened since then have essentially been Mayor Tory's uh, decision. And that was going to be my next question there uh, about the surprise. The city was just stunned when the mayor decided to resign and you got word of that the day before it even happened. Yeah, we started to hear um, on the Thursday, last Thursday is when I put the second round of detailed questions. Um, and it had more information about what we understood for the, the situation with this 30 year, 31 year old former staffer. My understanding is his advisors, there was information in there that, his, that was news to his advisors. These people have been huddled around him, advising him on how to deal with the crisis. I think for that, they realized that there was gonna be more coming out and then maybe they didn't know the full story. Um, and they're almost unanimous advice to him uh, from Thursday and leading into Friday was that they didn't think his mayoralty could continue in a kind of meaningful way that uh, that he would like. 
Now, you may not be able to get into any details, David, but is there more coming out? Is there more that we can expect on um, whether it's an, an investigation into city funds being used? Potentially, again, none of this confirmed on our end, but uh, looking to see if there is something else that could be coming out that maybe sparked Mayor Tory to, to resign on Friday. This certainly, we're, we're continuing to investigate. I mean, when you have something like this, there's always a lot of threads to pull. There's a lot of things that we think we know that we didn't uh, publish because we didn't have it confirmed and the mayor didn't confirm it. I mean, you think about just the question about uh, the mayor and this junior staffer traveled together to Europe and New York City. You know, was that really a business trip? Because uh, the person involved was helped arrange those trips. So there's lots and lots of questions. I would say if the mayor does resign, as it appears he's going to, we're hearing he might have some buyer's remorse on the resignation. But if he does, then that kind of changes the calculus on, for us because he wouldn't be a public official anymore. But I think when he is a mayor and he surrendered a certain amount of privacy, uh, when he sought public office, we will continue to investigate. Okay, David Ryder from the Toronto Star, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Anytime.